se budeš líbit, že bys možná příští sezonu mohla trénovat někde venku. Myslíš, že by bylo hezký, kdybych měla takový ten, ten piercing? Tady. for um, the possibility for being here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> have to say, firstly. <laughs> and the visuals, yeah, we, we developed uh, this approach with uh, Elvira. Like she, uh, at the very first uh, moments we spoke about this film, uh, she brought some aquarels with like, which were very blurry, which were with pastel tones. Uh, but I must say it's kind of developed throughout uh, the development itself and but the yeah uh, and it, it's it's turning like with the more uh, like vivid colors for example yeah but also we like from the beginning we, we knew it's like gonna be more like in details and point of views and with a handheld camera like more natural lighting that was like the main goal like to have it like natural and what yeah. were the main challenges uh, why why shooting this film uh, sorry what was the main was there uh, main, uh, some uh, main challenges while shooting this film uh, the um, challenges yes uh, like the biggest challenge was definitely the hockey scenes because it was a lot of movement, a lot of players, um, many things happening at the same time. So it was very detailedly like, pre like pre-planned. We, we had like all the floor plans and like very detailed storyboard. It, like in the cut, it's very fast going one shot after another, but we had it a bit like slowed down and like break down like in pieces very detailedly. It was like the most challenging thing. And uh, you said that you had a lot of, uh, um, you talked a lot also with the, with the director uh, Elvira uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for this film. So how did you put your ideas together? Um, how we put the ideas, like how we collaborated yeah, on yeah, exactly. the visuals. Um, with Elvira, she she has always some kind of like a base um, visual approach, I must say, and we somehow always um, like adapted to a situation or like what is the moment requiring and like yeah, but. And yes. uh, maybe tell us more also about uh, your background. How did you approach uh, cinematography for the first time? How mm -hmm. you got interest in this mm -hmm. uh, art? Uh, I started taking like pictures, and I was interested in uh, theater and in arts in general. And somehow I, I was, I was, I, I just um, discovered that film merges like everything all together and it's like a great tool for storytelling 
and that was it. Yeah, then I applied for the film school, which is like, this is the graduation film for, from the school. What can you tell us about uh, your experience in, uh, in the school? How, how it made, made you richer in uh, mm -hmm. this experience? Yeah, I, I, I didn't shoot almost anything like before the school and then it, it was, was the first time. Yeah, it was actually like the very first experience. So it gave me very much and it was very intense time. Yeah. Are you working on some new projects right now? Uh, right now, I'm more like uh, working on some post-production of another short film and the music video. We are doing like color grading now, but uh, no more like uh, narratives. Um, maybe Elvira is writing right now a feature script, so that might come after that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have any question from the audience? No? Okay, so thank you for being here. It was a pleasure and uh, hope to see you again soon. And thank you all for watching. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs>
So I'm just gonna be... Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Right now I'm here with uh, Luva von Hauswolf, sorry for butchering your name, and uh, he's the director of the film The Viewing Room, who is uh, taking part in the student competition Section Fiction. Uh, this film is about the character of uh, Fanny, and uh, she is a woman who is preparing a memorial for a deceased mother in an art gallery. And uh, before we start the chat, let's watch the trailer. Doctor, you can go further. Can I Okay, hi Luva, thank you for being here first. And um, so basically, uh, the, this film takes part, uh, takes part in, a, in an art gallery. And uh, of course we noticed that uh, it's a full work of art which are made from uh, the mother of the main character. Um, this uh, work of art are really fascinating. They have a, a weird beauty because they're, they're beautiful and also a little bit creepy actually. And I was wondering if you had any visual references and what you wanted to represent through these paintings. So the artwork is done by a friend of mine called Rebecca Tollens. Um, and something I struggled the most with, uh, I was worried the most uh, about was basically the artwork because uh, in the beginning I needed something figuratively for the audience to react to and try to make compositions where the artwork actually plays a huge part uh, with the visuals. So I was very lucky. It was a friend of mine who uh, recommended her through uh, Instagram, basically. Um, and uh, Rebecca was super friendly um, and allowed us to use all of the artwork in the film. And it, uh, the, the originals is actually much smaller, um, and they're all existed online, so we were able to make it on huge canvases, so they have a bigger impact, basically. Yeah. Uh, and also, what can you tell us uh, about uh, the relationship between the characters, and especially how you created the character of the father who plays a big role in this uh, film? Mm. So, the entire story, it's uh, very personal to me. I lost my mother when I was 23. Um, the difference is, I always had the security of my father and my brothers. Um, whereas I was imagining uh, someone who was going through the same thing, but um, took basically all the responsibility. Her being the only child, um, taking the responsibility of organizing the funeral, whereas um, it should have been the father's work, basically. Um, so I wanted to create a character that you can understand her struggles. Um, and because she's going, going through the grieving process, um, she's not really that sympathetic. So I wanted there to be... Um, I didn't want her to feel um, too friendly or, you know, it's because of the situation, basically. Um, and then I wanted the father to be someone who you could understand and is going through the same thing, but isn't maybe your typical patriarch. Um, he's a bit smaller, he's vulnerable, um, and it's basically just about everyone dealing with their own way uh, um, reacting to grief, yeah. basically. In fact, uh, it's like, um, from my point of view, what I understood is that uh, Fanny prefers to grieve alone in a certain sense. In fact, also um, in the last scene, we, saw, we see her that uh, she is alone, basically. And uh, also, I was curious about uh, the, um, 
uh, that last scene actually where uh, she eats the panna cotta in front of the painting while uh, she said uh, before that uh, she hates that, uh, that dessert, so how so? Yeah, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't think I have done, um, I think just before she's at that point when she meets, when she's having the conversation with the father's wife, uh, she's basically been through the breakdown, um, and she's completely honest. And then it's just like you said, it's, it's about your relationship with the person. And the difficulty is always with people that have gone through the same thing, is your relationship to your grievances. But sometimes people project themselves too much on you. Um, and it can be a challenge. About challenges, what was the most challenging part in this film? The most challenging part was um, shooting in Stockholm without my friends from London Film School, I think. I would love to have them uh, participate in the project, but I didn't have the funds to do so. It was also the best challenge because I, I was able to meet my entire team, the best collaborators I ever worked with, um, and they were all younger than me, so I was so happy to find that in my hometown. But the biggest issue was definitely finding a producer. So I didn't have a producer during the entire film until maybe three weeks before shooting. So the person that was assisting me and helped me with some of the stuff, casting-wise and so on, she asked me, do you mind if I do it? And she'd never done it before, and I was like, I had nothing left to lose. Um, and it was difficult in the beginning. We had some tough conversation, but it's proven to be one of the most fruitful relationships, basically. In fact, you said that uh, the film is shot in uh, Stockholm, but uh, you graduated at the London Film School. So I was wondering, what are the main differences that you notice, maybe, from a filmmaking point of view, from uh, Sweden and the UK, UK? I think Swedish filmmakers should never complain, compared to people in <laughs> London, <laughs> because, um, well, in London, it's, it's much bigger industry. You have a hierarchy, especially. Um, whereas in Sweden, I don't know what things are like here in Sofia, but you could basically shoot anywhere and no one will bother you, basically. Whereas I remember being in London, we tried to shoot in subways, we tried to shoot in parks. Uh, you know, the, the police were there in two seconds, basically. And what are you working at right now? I'm working on a new short film, um, but I... Um, but I have been struggling to, to find a new story, basically, uh, of something that would be sort of a continuation. I didn't want to do anything as big as the viewing room, so I'm thinking something in a much intimate space, basically. So you, uh, you like taking, par uh, taking uh, charge also of the writing part and not uh, taking stories from uh, someone else? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always open to other stories, but I was speaking with a friend of mine that went to the same cohort in London Film School, and I think it's, especially if you, want, if you want to do personal stories, it's very hard. I'm, very, I'm open to, to collaborate and everything, but it's so hard to find a collaborative partner in the screenwriting process because it's so personal. It's like finding a, a partner in life, basically. Um, so so my, my ambition is always to do personal projects, maybe not autobiographical, but personal projects at least. About that, sometimes uh, maybe it can be difficult to telling a story which is uh, very personal, knowing that uh, not only other people will watch it, but also other people working at the same project will uh, say their opinion and maybe critic and maybe want to make changes. So I was wondering, how do you deal with that? It's interesting, I, I felt after um, I lost my mom, it's when you go through something that difficult, something changes in you. Um, and the best part, I think, it's opening new doors. For example, you meet people who went through the same thing, and you have a different understanding of each other, so you don't have to do all the small talks and stuff. And I don't think it's that, um, what's the word? Um, Holy, in terms of, like, if you expose yourself and being open, you can get that um, uh, relationship with another person instead of feeling, oh, this is, you know, so precious. But of course, um, one should always be careful. You can't put all of yourself out there. 
um, so something you need <laughs> for yourself also. And do we have any question from the audience? No? Okay. So thank you a lot for being here, and I hope to see your next project maybe in this next edition. I, w I would love, yeah. I love, love to be back, and thank you so oh, yeah. much for inviting thank me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of Inda Palace International Short Film Festival. Uh, today we are here with uh, Ali Kivan Kuldurur from Turkey, who is representing the film Neighboring Sounds, taking part in the student competition category fiction. This film is about uh, uh, a young married couple who one night uh, overhears a domestic battery in the neighborhood. Uh, driven by curiosity, the husband, called Bilal, decides to go out to check what's happening. Um, and so let's watch the trailer.
Hello, Ali. Thank you for uh, being here today. And uh, first of all, I would like to start uh, a bit from your background. I know that uh, uh, you studied filmmaking, but before becoming a filmmaker, you studied literature and American culture at uh, the University of Ankara. And so why you decided to change after that? Uh, I mean, I've always, I've, even before university, I've always been interested in cinema anyway, but I didn't necessarily uh, think of pursuing it. Uh, I was, you know, but I was, uh, my interest has more become about the making of films during my studies and after finishing my bachelor's degree at Birkent in Ankara, I just um, decided to just, you know, give it a go and study filmmaking by making a practice. Uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. And how was your uh, experience at the London Film School? Uh, it was, yeah, it was really good. It was a really hands-on, practice-oriented education, which taught me a lot. And coming from a literature background, I didn't necessarily have that kind of uh, muscles developed, let me put it that way. So uh, I only shot stuff myself with my small you know, camera or whatsoever until that time. But yeah, the education that we had at school just gave us the opportunity with the safety net to just experience a real life uh, you know, filmmaking, I would say. Yeah. And um, is there a specific message that you wanted to, to deliver through this film? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's a hard, it's a hard question to answer. But of course, yeah, there is stuff that I would like to touch upon or mention. But I feel really cautious about the message aspect of it. You know, what's the message or do I want to? But of course, like, you know, there are things that I want to just, you know, transmit. You know. And uh, what can you tell us about uh, uh, the, the two characters? Because uh, they seem pretty detached from each other. And so I wanted you to ask you something about uh, the relationship between them and how you created those characters. Uh, how I created those characters? Uh, I mean, they're a married couple, a young, sorry, yeah. Uh, they're a married couple, young couple, uh, and I just needed, you know, there was the situation, the issues that I wanted to mention, and I thought a, mar a young married couple who just moved into a new neighborhood could be a good, could be a good set of characters, and that's why I just, you know, decided to create these two characters who are a bit, like you said, maybe detached, maybe not, you know, very uh, close to each other, or seems like it. But yeah, that's kind of the origin. If I understood correctly, the film takes place during the lockdown. In fact, you're always encouraged to wear masks and to stay at home. Uh, so I was wondering why, why, why this decision? Uh, I mean, it doesn't take, doesn't necessarily take place uh, during the lockdown. But when there were still rules, you know, applied during the lockdown, I had, a, I had, a, I had that thought, and I, when I was sharing the script with some of my friends to have their ideas, should I, because I knew that this film was going to be screened in the next year or so, where the lockdown rules and regulations or masks will no longer maybe in everyday life. But I just wanted the film to be kind of the uh, product or representation of the time that is being made. So that's why I decided to you know, keep it in the film. And that kind of detachment from one another, which is, I think, an underlying thing in the film, became even more evident during the lockdown, so, it, or, you know, during this, you know, post-COVID era. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to just, you know, keep it that way. In a certain way, it uh, makes the film even more um, frightening, in a certain sense. Oh, yeah. And okay. also the fact that uh, it's uh, completely shot during the night, so it's also very dark. Yeah. And what was the main challenge in that? Uh, exactly that. If we shot the film during autumn and the days were relatively longer and we could only start rolling the camera when the sun set, you know. So we could only work for six hours a day or seven hours a day. That's why we had a bit of a longer production time. And it does something to your, I think, biological rhythm to just work at night even though you try to rest during the day. So I think that was a really, really big challenge while we were making this film. Yeah. Yeah. And what can you tell us about uh, filmmaking in, uh, in Turkey? Uh, I mean, I'm still 
I'm still learning about it. I'm still finding it out because I studied filmmaking in London, so I don't necessarily have, you know, just you know, like you know, I don't know much about the filmmaking community or you know industry, if you may say so, uh, in Turkey right now. But but I know, and I have been watching short films for the last two years, three years, uh, and there are really nice, good films are being made, short films and features also. That's what I know. Are you preparing to shoot something new? Uh, yes, I'm actually in the process of writing another short film, which again, I plan to do it in my hometown, Izmir, Turkey. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do we have any questions? Mm. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see your next films. And uh, thank you again and good luck for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you for Hopefully. watching. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Luca McCormick yep. from uh, UK, uh, who is uh, representing the film uh, The Campsy Files, who is taking part in the student competition category fiction. Uh, this film is about the story of uh, Dylan, who meets with his father, uh, Peter, to go scatter their uh, grandfather ashes. And uh, we will discover something about their relationship during the film. And let's watch the trailer. Are you tired already? <laughs> uh, 
Hi, Luca. Thank Hi. you for being here with, uh, with your film. Thanks um, for having us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, first thing I want to ask you is about the two characters, the two main characters. The first thing that we have can notice is that they have uh, two different approach in uh, dealing with uh, grief, two very different approach. Yeah. And so, how did you come up with this, uh, this idea? So, this is uh, actually a semi a biographical sort of thing. It's based on uh, when me and my dad went up to the Campsie Fells to scatter the ashes of my step-grandfather. And basically, he was a big bike enthusiast and he kind of always wanted that. And um, it, was, it was just kind of a dire entry at first and then it kind of um, seemed like a promising thing to kind of make into a film. But, um, but yeah, I guess uh, the kind of relationship between the characters is very much based on how I interact with my dad, and in the sense of that, um, um, I'm part Croatian and uh, he's uh, uh, British, and basically I think it's kind of a very sort of British thing to kind of, um, kind of cope with hard things through humor and not maybe always saying the thing, and there's always this kind of like um, sort of passive aggressive way of communication and subtlety. So I guess that was the kind of the, 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 the big um, inspiration. Yeah. In fact, uh, you said uh, you lived in Croatia for a very long time. And so other than that, does it, uh, this background affected your work in, other, in any other, other way? Yeah, for sure. I mean, actually, it was kind of a big um, uh, culture shock thing when I actually moved to the UK you kind of see it at home, and then when you move to the UK, you kind of get a sense of how different it is over there. And yeah, I think it, it, it just gives me that uh, perspective. I mean, Croatian and British culture are quite sort of opposite in a lot of ways, uh, in the sense of that Croatians are uh, a lot more open in some way and argumentative, and uh, the Brits are a bit more closed off, I guess. That's kind of the stereotype, and I, I find that to be true. So. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely impacted me and given me a perspective that's a little bit different, I, I suppose. And you also said that uh, in your films there are some uh, recording themes and that you like especially exploring the theme of loneliness through a comedic lens. And can you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, I don't know. I kind of just like... Um, I've always kind of used film as a way to connect to, to people um, by sort of like making films and kind of... Um, employing, not employing, but kind of like collaborating with people and making friends that way. And so that's always been a thing. And I've always really liked um, uh, films about friendship in a way. And uh, a big inspiration for this film was Sideways. Um, and, and so, yeah, I guess I'm, I, I'm kind of very interested in that. And that's kind of like thing, things that I've noticed in my own sort of work, yeah. Also, it's, uh, it was a shoot completely outdoors. Yes, yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, so it was a student production, and we started around March of 2020, and then this was just about the time of COVID happening, and then I, it, it was just about to be announced the lockdown, and I woke up on the first day, and I said, I have a fever, I can't do this shoot. So we canceled that, and it was a complete disaster, we lost all of our money, um, and then we were able to kind of like, um, do it again six months later during some like a sort of like COVID rule where you could shoot outside so we're all in tents and stuff like that so um, but so yeah a tumultuous process uh, but um, yes all outdoors completely yeah. and uh, how do you work with your collaborators sometimes you know when uh, it can happen then there are different point of views different ideas about how doing things and how do you cope with that um I'm not too sure. <laughs> it depends on the person, I guess. I, I, I mean, um, I think it's important to, when you're making a film, to kind of be on the same page um, with things. And you kind of have to work that out in the beginning. And then um, once you're on the same page, everything works smoothly, I guess. I, I'm not too sure. Um, it's something I figure out myself. Yeah. Yeah. And are there some uh, uh, director in particular that uh, influenced your works? Um, yeah, so Alexander Payne is a big one. Um, uh, what else? Um, I like uh, this film called Rachel Got Married. Um, 
which is starring Anne Hathaway, and it's, uh, it's, it's sort of like a dogma shot film. Uh, but I, I, I guess like I quite like sort of uh, small human personal stories, um, and I, I am kind of following this kind of like uh, films that can move you and make you laugh. So, there was a, was there a moment in particular in your life when uh, you maybe you watched a movie and decided, okay, this is what I want to do in my life? Um, or was maybe more a process thing? Yeah, I think it was a bit of a process thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a particular moment. I guess, yeah. And are you working on something else right now? Yeah, I'm, so I've moved back to Croatia for the time being, and I'm hoping to, um, writing in Croatian is a struggle uh, of its own, but um, I'm hoping to make something in Croatian for the first time and, and apply to that. This is the Croatian fund for films and stuff like that, so I guess that's the next thing, yeah. Do we have any questions from the audience? Oh, okay, thank you for being here. I hope uh, to see your next project in Croatian then. Yes. <laughs> Thank you Definitely. all for watching. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Cassandra from the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Uh, right now I'm here with Alexander Szymalek from uh, Poland, director of the film uh, To Mother, who is taking part in the um, student competition category Fiction of In the Palace. Uh, to Mother tells the story about uh, uh, Adam, an adult man who returns to his own village after a long stay in a closed center, trying to readapt to a new life uh, and uh, reconnect with his mother. Uh, let's watch the trailer. Elka wróciła. Widziałem ich. Z nim? Czego chcesz? Odwal się!
Hello, Alexander. Hello. Thank you for being here talking about, uh, about your film. It's a pleasure to have you here. And um, first thing first, uh, Adam character is uh, very particular and uh, very interesting as it was written. So how you created it? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Well, for me, the, the most important thing was uh, like, like for the spectators not to know what was the background of him. Like it was the idea to give the space for the spectators, for, for the people who watch this movie, uh, to, to like create their own story of Adam, so they can relate to him, or they can, they can feel compassion to him. And I can, te I can tell you what was my, uh, like the main idea of, yes, of, of the background, uh, and how I created it with my, like the second director who, 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 who helped me. Uh, making this movie, uh, yeah, we, we we created this. He was to, he Adam was supposed to be uh, I don't know if it's a good word, but someone who who is not, not weird because weird is a bad a bad pejorative word, but uh, like we we mixed a couple of uh, couple of disorders, <laughs> psychological disorders like autism and and traumas um, to, to create Adam, and we left also the space for the, the actor. Uh, like we had a couple of meetings with him before making movie rehearsal and so, and we, we talked to him and we were trying to, we were trying to leave him space as I, as, as I told you. Uh, like he could create this character with us, so it was based on this and that, what I told, and like the, the, the place that he's coming from, it was supposed to be some place, like at, at the first, uh, in the scenario it was a uh, psychiatric hospital, but we erased that, uh, because like I told you, we wanted to give the space for the spectators, like to, you know, don't, don't give too many details to make this story more mysterious than it was at the beginning. But one thing that is shown is that uh, he has a special connection with animals and uh, he liked them very much and also throughout the film there is also a focus on a couple of uh, inseparable parrots. Was there a symbolism in that? In the animals, uh, you mean? Yes, 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 because uh, as you can see, the, the main problem of Adam is, uh, is making relationships with people uh, and, and in contact with people, so from my experience and from what I, I don't know, what I read, what I heard, you know, how, how, how I see the world, uh, sometimes people, when, when, when they have this problem, like finding themselves in the society, they always, they always uh, flee to the nature and, and try to find their way in the nature, in the animals and in, in, in the organic things, so that was the purpose of this. And uh, what about the village where uh, the action takes place? Is it based on a real place? No, no, it was supposed to be, as I told you, the mysterious place, not, not, not specified place, in, somewhere in Poland, somewhere, some village in Poland, like some village that you can relate when you're in Poland, or maybe in Bulgaria, like there are many villages like this, so it was supposed to be like this, not specified village, but, but mysterious village with foggy, <laughs> foggy landscapes. Yeah, creepy, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, what about the character of uh, his mother? She's, uh, she seems that she's pretty, she's struggling. Oh, obviously, with the, with the situation and um, how you talked about her. Um, I wanted her to be like the beloved mother, like loving mother of her son, and, and always trying to forgive uh, her son because I don't know if you if you if you got that, but uh, obviously he did something in the past, like Adam. I mean Adam. That's why the other people in the village uh, have so much hate to him. Uh, so, like, she, she was supposed to be, and I hope so she is, uh, she is that the, the archetype of a good mother, like the loving mother, always forgiving her son. So that was the main purpose, to, like, the, the one who gives him a compassion, compassion to, to, his son, to her son, sorry. <laughs> um, let's talk also a bit about uh, your background. You know that uh, you studied also in, uh, in France. Yes. You had an experience in the University of Nantar. What uh, can you tell us about that experience? Uh, I left to France because I have, I have a family there. I left to France uh, to study, uh, so I spent a year there with my family, working and uh, learning more French because I learned French in Poland. Uh, and then I got to the university, but 
the idea of, of, of the film studies that we have in Poland and what they have in France on the universities, it, it wasn't like the, my dream, uh, dream situation uh, studies. I, mean, I, I always treated this as, as a, some experience because it was more film knowledge studies, like the theoretical studies connected with theater and so. so that was experience for me to get more on the history of cinema, get the other culture, get new friends. But I always wanted to get to the film school and, 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 and get that practice and get that idea as I told you. And uh, they had. how do you put together ideas with the other member of the teams, maybe, you know, your, uh, your, your entire crew? Uh, excuse me, can you? <laughs> how do you put together your ideas with the other member of the crew when they give you uh, some ideas about how to shoot something or... Yeah, yeah I, 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 always, I, I always open to, to the ideas of the crew and I always, I always like to because like filmmaking is a, is a cooperative work. I never exclude anybody. So if, if somebody, even maybe a, might be a runner or driver, I don't know, some people that I know only on the movie set because it's the production that gets them. Sometimes it's like this, but I always like talk to the people, talk on the ideas. We we get that uh, meeting before shooting uh, to talk how it's gonna be today. If anybody has some uh, advices concerning the day before shooting, so I always try to make that family feeling on the movie set just so, because it was a student movie, so obviously everybody was working for free. Uh, so that's, that's even more uh, for me to, to have that feeling, that, that family feeling um, on the movie set. Yeah. Are you working at something else right now? Uh, not yet, I have a couple of the ideas. Uh, I'm a cinematographer, uh, actually. I'm not a director. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because it was an assignment, and we had this, you know, we have this chance in, in our school. We can make our own movies, uh, more focus on the cinematography as a cinematographers. So for now, yes, I'm working on a couple of projects with directors, but I'm also thinking about uh, f feature documentary. Uh, I have a couple of subjects that I'm researching on, so I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe, you know, I'm focusing uh, more on cinematography because that's my main profession. How did you, how did you um, decide to start that uh, path? Cinematography? Uh, I think it started because of the photography and my parents working on the movie sets. They, they are working as a crew, nothing creative actually. But I spent a lot of time on the movie set, so I think that was the main uh, thing that made me fall in love. It was <laughs> contagious. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So yes, I think that that was the photography and the aesthetical things and the, the, the background. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any questions? No? Okay, so thank you a lot for uh, this conversation. It was thank a pleasure you. and I uh, hope to see your next project as well, also documentary things. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank yes. you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International F Short Film Festival. And uh, right now I'm here with uh, Joao Salgado from uh, Portugal, who is here to present his film uh, Wetsuit, who is taking part in the student competition in the category fiction. Uh, this film is very particular, in fact it presents the story of uh, three different characters uh, who are completely unrelated, but throughout the film uh, we see how their story is connected. And before starting, let's watch the trailer. Então, assustaste? Não. De certeza? Sabes que há aqui fantasmas? Não acredito nisso. Estás bem? Okay. Hello, Joao. Thank Hi. you. Thank you for being here again. Thank you and, for having uh, me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> and so, first thing first, eventually, what was the meeting point that you wanted to show through this film between the story of these three characters? Uh, so, so the meeting point there's um, there's a li I think there's I was working with the, the literal meeting point of this wetsuit. The idea when you take off a, a surfing or a water wetsuit, it just looks like your skin that has not a body inside. And it's this idea that they're all taking off a suit and putting on a suit. And to play with the idea that what suits do you put on as a man? The suit of a kid, as the bully, of the sportsman, of the alpha male. And so each of them are undressing and dressing with these real suits and metaphorical suits. Yeah, in yeah. fact, uh, every character is also in a different stage in their life because we see a kid that is uh, exploring sexuality for the very first time yeah. and other adult men who are, uh, seem to have everything already found out. And uh, so it's more a metaphorical sense about uh, what, uh, what this person will be in their, in their life. Yeah, it's, they're all in, in transitory. The first one is about to leave the country or about to leave. The other kid is kind of just is growing up and he's still a little kid being bullied, but he's about to, to change and mature and the other one. Is, so, yeah, and they're in this, way, in this space between the ocean and the, and the world. So it's about they're kind of haven't decided what type of man they will be kind of thing. And, um, what were your, uh, maybe there were some uh, films or director that uh, gave you some inspiration for this uh, film in particular or other works of you? There, there was a film now, but I, I'm skip. I'm forgetting the name is not coming to me. But it's an Argentinian filmmaker. What's his name? He has these really nice short films. Um, yeah, I can't forget. Oh, now I'm forgetting his name. But no, but it's a lot of films, a lot of references. The, um, I was very try to focus on not doing a character, on not doing a, a character study. But then it is obviously character study. But just also other short films that kind of created a, a setting and a mood, and it's much more about that than about how a character changes or what he learns about himself. Um, and what can you tell us about uh, um, the difference between uh, uh, being a filmmaker in Portugal and being a filmmaker in the UK? Um, yeah, so being a filmmaker in Portugal is, um, is um, I think it's easier, I don't know, in the UK, it's, you can kind of make films, connect with people, do kind of be a weekend filmmaker, but you'll have more jobs. But I think in Portugal, it's where the stories that I want that need to take place. But it's a, it's a hard time because you, it's hard because you have to apply for money. It takes a long time. And so there's a lot of, there's not this thing you like, let's just shoot it and we'll see what happens. So there's a lot of waiting. 
which I think might be the same thing here, waiting for funding and stuff like yeah. that. All of filmmaking is struggling <laughs> for the same things. <laughs> and uh, usually when you have a new idea for, uh, for a movie, how, um, how do you start the creative process? How do you carry, make it go on? I, I don't know, it's kind of, um, it's kind of an image. This film, uh, I'm also working on a feature that's kind of based on this idea. It come, just comes from an image or a feeling and knowing that, okay, this can turn into a story and just keep digging and digging and digging. Yeah, in fact, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a film that it, can, it could be turned actually into a feature film because it has a lot of elements that could yeah. be... Uh, it was like a seed that it was planted, but it can develop in something more. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. One of the projects that I'm working with to kind of grow these characters, to, or to add more characters, and yeah, but just this space of people looking for waves and looking at the ocean. I think it's very. So the ocean is always a recording theme in your stories. I mean, so far this is my my first film, but I hope to make it a a recurring theme. Yeah. And uh, yeah, tell us more about uh, this project you're working on. It's um, it's kind of picking the same the the same idea of of the people going from parking lot. This all takes place in one parking lot, one kind of place in between the ocean and nature, but that it can be a non-space or like a space in between. And this is just a film where people go from place to place, mm -hmm. looking for waves, and no place is good enough, and it's just a a nice road movie. And uh, was there a main challenge that you have to face while uh, shooting this, uh, this film from uh, every aspect, from the shooting point of view, from uh, the pre-production or post-production, whatever? Yeah, I think we talked about, I was talking about this yesterday. Uh, there was a lot, obviously lots of production problems and that you're solving, but one thing that I really struggled with and I take as a big lesson is I, f I filmed it outside Lisbon in a place that I know I was staying there for a week and lots of interesting characters and and sto other stories happened around the film, and I tried to film some of them, and, f and knowing, like, because although it's scripted, it's very improvised, it's a very loose, loosely formed film, and I was kind of like, oh, so attracted to other stories that I was meeting whilst I was there, that it was very hard to, to not put them in the film, and I tried, and I spent a lot of time try trying to put them in the film, but I think next time it's easier to be focused and trust that you can separate both you, you like a lot also taking part, uh, taking charge also of the writing process. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I like, but I keep it very loose. I think it's a very loose writing process. Yeah. Uh, and actually about that, uh, how uh, is your method? Because, uh, you know, when it's about writing a movie, there are two different uh, kind of approaches. Yeah. There are those that say, okay, I have to plan everything. I, put, uh, I do every planning, uh, every scene. Those that just, okay, just uh, let it drive up from the inspiration. So yeah. how, where are you? Where are you I'm, I'm trying to figure, figure out an, an experiment, but I think I'm more to write, but then to let the places. Mm -hmm. It's very, that's why I like it, to shoot outdoors in real places or in, and then let it. But it's hard to choose, like, oh, maybe this is a good element or that, because you get very excited in the moment. Basically, you could, you, you would, uh, you want to do everything, but yeah. you cannot do everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, it was uh, also this film was uh, shoot, li shoot uh, mainly uh, on the on the outside in uh, outdoor spaces. Yeah. And that was also something that uh, you had to deal with. Maybe created some difficulties. Yeah. No, it was. We found just kind of a quiet place. By it was very hard to find. The, the visual space that I was after, but it was. But once it was found, it was a, an easy shoot. And now you're planning to stay in Lisbon to do the other project, or are you planning to yeah. move again? Yeah, I'm in between Lisbon. Yeah, I'm in Lisbon most of the time. Yeah. Okay. And do we have any questions from the audience? Okay. Right. So thank you a lot for uh, for being here. So eventually we managed to to have yeah. this interview, it and good luck for all your projects. Thank you. Thank Film thank screens you. today at 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Don't miss it. All right.
Where do I look? Where do I look? Where do I look? There, there. Look wherever you want. <laughs> okay. I look there. No? This is. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Maria Zmicharova. I'm a translator for In the Palace International Short Film Festival. This is the 20th edition of the festival. And this now is the QA session for the films in the professional fiction category. We are here with Victoria Alexanian, uh, director and writer of the film Crossing the Blue. Let's watch the trailer first and then we'll talk about your film. I think the film is more hopeful than the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You might say I might I might You're be right. wrong, I don't know. Um, it's the story right. of, of Anoush, this woman who left Armenia some time ago uh, to flee from her abusive husband and to save her son, and now she is forced to go back. And you are the, uh, the writer of the, of the script together with um, the actress who plays Anoush, Armine Anda. How, how did you come up with the story and how did you write the story, especially in a, in a co cooperation with someone else. Yeah, sure. Um, this, is, this was the time of my life when I was uh, coming back home. It was, it was a big moment for me. I lived in the United States for quite a bit and um, decided to, to make a move back home and rediscover it. And there was a lot happening at the time for me. Um, Hence, I guess, the, um, the topic of homecoming, but in a sad way. Um, I didn't make my own story. I wanted to find somebody else's story within my emotions and feelings and hard, um, um, uh, hard emotions that I was experiencing. So I looked and looked and looked. And so um, eventually I had a story of a woman, um, of a mother um, who gave everything to, to have a better life for her child. And then eventually she becomes useless, both for the society where she was and for the son and for everyone. Um, but she still has to find hope for herself and keep running because it's life. Um, when I met Armine, um, she's, by the way, not only the lead actress and co-writer, but she's also uh, the producer of the film. Uh, she's a really good producer, I think. Um, she found herself in the character, and I was still in the process of writing it, so we developed her character together, and um, a lot of the dialogue, a lot of the... Um, even the dialogue that eventually um, didn't make it to the final film, it was a whole journey for us to discover who she was together and um, find the film um, story um, come into real life. It starts with like a poem about a goat. It, it sounds poetic. I'm not sure if it's a poem, if it's the beginning of an actual Armenian fairy tale. 
Is it or did I you? I think that fairy tale is quite universal. It exists in different countries. So the seven. The s yes, exactly. The seven the little, seven little go oh, okay. goats. goats, and um, it is told by mothers in all sorts of different cultures. But there is also f the culture you of. You say that the mother has become useless to her son, even, but that's not true. I I see it as. Oh, that's not true. Let me tell you what it's true. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, as I understand it, um, she she did what she could, and she did give uh, her kid um, a future. And now he's 18. He's running to fend for himself in a way. So it's not it's not useless. Like sh he's beyond childhood now in a way, and she has been there for him for the most important part of his life. Yes, uh, yes, it's definitely um, an interpretation that can exist, and I think um, the fact that different people see it from different angles and find their own way to see it is really good for me. I'm, I'm really happy with um, lots of different versions of how to see it, and I think, uh, in re regardless of how I see it, I think it's really true that she did do her job, even if she finds maybe that she didn't um, succeed um, um, to stay with him and she didn't succeed to be anyone uh, beyond just a janitor, a cleaner. Uh, we can briefly see that she's, a, she's just a cleaner trying to make her ends meet. And of course, what she ends up doing is stealing. Um, she's accused of stealing and she spends time in... Um, um, well, we don't talk about whether she's imprisoned or not, but she, she was arrested. Mm -hmm. and so that's the reason why she, she's sent back, is it? I'm not specifying okay. why she's being sent right. back. And um, there, are, there are lots of reasons why someone can be deported back. Um, sometimes it's just a big political decision to send. Yeah. But a lot of the people who are illegal immigrants in... Um, in Europe or States, they end up having a really hard life and they end up having to do things that are not, um, unfortunately, um, you know, accepted by the society or legal or, or they, they do things just to meet their ends. Mm. There's one um, scene very poignant in the film where she's cleaning the, the toilets, the bathrooms, and her little um, silver cross that hangs around, around her neck falls into the toilet bowl, and she just looks at it. And it's not... I don't, I don't think it's about disgust or about how inappropriate it is for a cross to fall into the bowl, but I see it as a... Why do I... As, as if she's thinking, why do I even still believe in this God or, or yeah that's exactly what what what, it, what it drives is. her doesn't seem to be some hope f from beyond it's within her I think yeah I um, think that's a that's a metaphor my own metaphor for a really um, deep depression because when you stop believing as a as a believer i guess if you're not a believer then it doesn't matter but if it's a believer who carries a cross if you stop believing in god as well if you have um indifference towards the sacred even a fleeting moment um her look there you know where we the toilet is like the lowest part where we consider unappropriate. She looks there and she thinks about what this whole thing is and what the life is about and um, whether there can be hope somewhere where like a cross falls into a toilet. You, you're also a, a writer, uh, you're also a producer and you worked for the like a na national cinema organization back in Armenia, right? And then you co-founded the independent filmmakers community of Armenia. What today is a day for like international appreciation and support to the Writers Guild uh, strike in the States. Why do you, uh, what's the situation for writers in Armenia, first of all? Uh, and then why did you feel the need to co-create a, a, a separate organization for independent filmmakers? What's the, what's the filmmaking situation back 
at your home? Um, well, first of all, I will specify that I didn't um, specifically work for the um, cinema center in Armenia. I was just part of the um, independent committee mm. that was um, called, that is always called each year to serve as, as a sort of jury for the projects. So still uh, independent. Yes, right. I was okay. still. I wasn't All really, right. um, yeah, working there or employed. Um, but I was part of the um, selecting committee uh, one year, mm -hmm. and I learned lots of things about in the industry that that from that point on. And it was just after me moving back from States, um, I did realize um, that uh, we have. Um, need for independent voice and we, ne we have a need for filmmakers joining force and speaking up uh, to drive changes. So right after that, um, a group of, you know, young um, and uh, um, up and coming filmmakers joined together for an activist community. This is what independent filmmakers community was. And we started um, speaking about what needs to be and can be changed uh, to create a more vibrant, free, fair and professional environment in Armenia for a future of filmmaking. Uh, we realized that there is a long way to go. It's not about doing, you know, having something today. It's about having something tomorrow. Um, from that on, we found the organization and um, we um, supported um, a new law for cinematography that was uh, in writing at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was about a bit of an activist right. uh, act rather than something um, that was supposed to... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were uh, the film was selected uh, by many festivals already as some awards already. Congratulations on that, Thank you. of course. And um, when you took part in a pitching session uh, at, in Montpellier, uh, which is called "From Short to Long," do you see short films as a um, like a first initial step or a stepping stone in the process of creating? longer f feature films or is it uh, is short cinema a genre in itself um, I think it can be both but my personal opinion um, is I see short films as a separate genre I'm not trying to make a feature out of any of my shorts I could I guess if there was a need or there was an idea but um, on, um, sort of Okay, you're, you've done your short 